Tax, subject to four problems. Problem one, Kathy bought two parrots and three finches for a total of $38. Tim bought one parrot and five finches for a total of $40. Which system of equations can be used to find the cost of one parrot and one finch? If we look at the answer choices, we see that there are two variables, P and F, P representing the number of parrots and F representing the number of finches. It's just a matter of matching the correct numbers with the correct variables. In this first sentence, we have two parrots and three finches for a total of $38. And here is what those two variables equaling $38 are in evidence in answer B. And for the next sentence, we have 1P or P plus 5F are equal to 40. And that equation is also found in answer B. So therefore, B is our correct answer. On most versions of the text, there is a problem very much like this one. This is one of those easy ones you cannot afford to miss. On answer C, to pick it in error, the only thing you would have to do wrong is match the total dollar amounts with the wrong equations. Be careful and get it right. Problem 2. Allentown has a population of 42,713. If the population decreases at a rate of 212 people per year, in about how many years will the population be 37,000? In this problem, there are some key words that can help us to understand what is really going on. The first word we'll look at is this one, about. The word about tells us that we'll not likely be getting an exactly right answer, so we are alerted to look for the best answer. Also, we have this phrase, decreases at a rate of 212 people per year. And within this phrase, particularly the words rate of and per. These words tell us that there is a constant or linear rate of change. We can construct an equation to model the situation we first put 42,713 for our starting population. Next we subtract 212 times a variable which we can call y for the number of years. It's the word decrease that makes us subtract 212y. Then we place equals 37,000. Now we have an equation we can solve for the unknown y to get our answer. To solve for our unknown y, the first thing we'll do is subtract 42,713 from both sides of the equation. 42,713 minus 42,713 cancel on the left side of the equation. We bring down what's left, negative 212y equals negative 5,713. Next we divide both sides of the equation by negative 212. Negative 212 over negative 212 cancel on the left side of the equation. And we have our answer, y equals about 26.95, which is rounded to the nearest hundredth place. Alternatively, we could have placed 42,713 minus 212x in our function editor in the graphing calculator. And then from there, we can go to the table view by pressing second, then graph. And from here, we can scroll down until we get to our answer choices. And we again see that 27 years gets us closest to the population of 37,000, again reaffirming B as our correct answer. And that number is closest to this answer, 27 years. And we circle our correct answer. Problem 3. The high school band needs to raise $400 for new uniforms. They are selling raffle tickets for $3.25 each. How many raffle tickets must they sell in order to earn the money? Here we have a problem that relates to everyday life. A high school band needs to raise money so they sell raffle tickets, which are tickets that give a chance to win a prize of value. We will let our unknown be represented by X, which is the number of tickets they must sell. Now we can write an equation to represent the situation. We don't know how many tickets need to be sold yet, but we know that 3.25 times the unknown x will be equal to at least $400. To now solve for x, we divide both sides of the equation by 3.25. 3.25 over 3.25 cancel on the left side of the equation. And dividing 400 by 3.25, x equals a little over 123 tickets. And as in most real world situations, there is not an exact answer, but our best answer is 124, and that is D. And in the calculator, we can go to y equals and enter our equation, y equals 3.25x. Now from here, we can go to our table view by pressing second, then graph. 
We could scroll down until we get to the ticket numbers of 110 through 124 in our answer choices, but our calculator has a neat feature called Table Set, which we can get to by pressing the second key then the window key, and this is the Table Set menu. We can go here with the arrows to change the independent mode to Ask instead of Auto. And here it is, highlighted by moving to Ask and pressing Enter. And now we go to the table view by pressing 2nd, then Graph again. Note that there are no values in the table. In the Ask mode, it's waiting for us to enter the input values. From here we can enter all the input values of answer A, B, C, and D. The output values pop up automatically. And we see that our correct answer, the only input that gives us at least $400, is answer C, 124 tickets. Problem 4. Which number is a solution of the following inequality? The inequality shown is 3 times quantity x plus 4 is less than x plus 15. What we need to find out is which of these answers, a through d, substituted in for x in these two places make the inequality a true statement. So we try out the answers. For answer a we have this, 3 times quantity 2.5 plus 4 is less than 2.5 plus 15 and that simplifies to 3 times 6.5 is less than 17.5 and that becomes 19.5 is less than 17.5 is that true that 19.5 is less than 17.5 no it's not true so we cross off answer a since the largest value for x is wrong we should have an idea that if there is only one right answer it makes sense to go down to the smallest number the one in answer d to see if it works so we have 3 times quantity 1 plus 4 is less than 1 plus 16. That simplifies to 3 times 5 is less than 16. And finally that becomes 15 is less than 16. Is 15 less than 16? Of course it is. So we circle our correct answer D. However, take the time to try all the answers in the unlimited time allowed for the tax just to be 100% sure you're not missing anything. Problem 5. The ordered pair 2 comma negative 2 is a solution of which linear inequality? This problem is similar to the last one, problem 4. Probably the easiest way to do it is to substitute x and y values into the inequality and see which one works. For answer a, with 2 for x and negative 2 for y. Negative 2 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2. And that is negative 2 is less than or equal to 1. That one looks true, that negative 2 is less than 1. We try out all the other answers, and B, C, and D are all false. We then circle the correct answer, A. Problem 6. Solve for x in the following inequality. 3x plus 1 is less than or equal to 5x minus 5. This is a classical, straightforward algebra problem where we solve for the unknown x. I like to solve for the unknown on the left side and have the numbers to the right side of the inequality. So the first thing is to subtract 1 from both sides of the inequality. 1 minus 1 cancel on the left side. We bring down what's left, and that is 3x is less than or equal to 5x minus 6. The next thing we'll do is subtract 5x from both sides of the inequality. The 5x minus 5x cancel on the right side of the inequality. We bring down what's left, negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 6. To solve for x, we divide both sides of the inequality by negative 2. Negative 2 over negative 2 cancel on the left side of the inequality. We bring down what's left, x is less than or equal to 3. Since 3 is the boundary point, we eliminate answers a and b, which are crossed off. Aren't we forgetting something? Yes, we are forgetting something. We need to remember that when solving for inequalities, whenever we divide by a negative number, we need to change the direction of the inequality so it becomes x is greater than or equal to 3. Now we finish this problem up by checking our work. Let's substitute a number greater than 3, let's say 4, and use it to check the validity of our original inequality. 3 times 4 plus 1 is less than or equal to 5 times 4 minus 5. And that simplifies to 12 plus 1 is less than or equal to 20 minus 5. And that is 13 is less than or equal to 15. That's a true statement. Check. So that means that our answer C, x is greater than or equal to 3, is our correct answer. 
Problem 7. The basketball team made 45 field goals in their last game. Some of the field goals were worth 2 points and the others were worth 3 points. The team scored a total of 101 points from the field goals during the game. How many 2 point field goals were made? There are a lot of ways to do this problem. We can take the number of 2 point and 3 point field goals from each answer. Then we can take the number of 2 point field goals, multiply them by 2, and the number of 3 point field goals and multiply them by 3. And finally we can add the number of points together to see which answer gives us 101 points. For answer A we have 7 2 point field goals. So we can set up an equation to find the 3 point field goals and that would be 7 plus n equals 45. To solve for n or the number of 3 point field goals subtract 7 from each side of the equation. 7 minus 7 cancel on the left side. We bring down what's left and that's n equals 38 and that's our number of 3 point field goals. Next we find the total points by taking 7 times 2 plus 38 times 3. And that's 14 plus 114 equals 128 points. And since that's way too many points, we only need 101 points, we cross off answer A. Since A was way off and answer B is only slightly different, we'll go down to answer C to try it out. And that would be 34 plus N equals 45. We solve for N by subtracting 34 from both sides of the equation. 34 minus 34 cancel on the left side. That gives us N equals 11. Next we take 34 times 2 plus 11 times 3. And that becomes 68 plus 33 equals 101. And that gives us C as our correct answer since that's what we were looking for, 101 points. You could also solve this equation by the technique of elimination. From the text we can form two equations. We'll let X be the two point field goals and let Y be the three point field goals. From there we can get two equations, x plus y equals 45, and then 2x plus 3y equals 101 for the total points. And now we'll bring the equations up to work on them. Since we're solving for x, the number of two point field goals, we make a move to eliminate the variable y. We'll multiply the top equation by negative 3. That becomes negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 135, placed down below the second equation. Adding the two equations together, 3y plus negative 3y cancel. We bring down what's left, adding the equations together, negative x equals negative 34. And dividing both sides of the equation by negative 1, x equals 34. And that's again our earlier answer, D, C. We could have quite easily solved by graphing as well. There are a lot of other ways to do this one. Problem 8, which point is not a solution of the inequality negative 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to negative 3. The way to solve this one is easy and that's to replace x and y in the inequality with the x and y coordinates for each answer choice. So for answer A that becomes negative 2 times negative 3 plus 3 times negative 3 and that simplifies to 6 minus 9 is less than or equal to negative 3 which further simplifies to negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 3. Is this a true statement? Yes, it is true, because negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 3, since it does equal negative 3. However, we're looking for a point that is not a solution, and that makes A a wrong answer, so we cross it off. Wording is very important here. Now we go on to answer choice B. We'll be substituting 1 third for x and negative 5 ninths for y. At this point, we'll make use of the calculator. You could do this without a calculator, but algebra students are notorious for being intimidated by fractions. We can store the value of 1 third for x by entering 1 divided by 3, then press the storage key, which is the STO key above the ON key, then press the X key between the alpha and STAT keys, then press the ENTER key. Next, we place our Y coordinate, negative 5 ninths, in place by taking negative 5 divided by 9, we press the storage key as we did earlier. Now we enter Y by pressing Alpha, then the 1 key. Then press Enter. Next we enter the left side of the inequality, negative 2X plus 3Y. Then press Enter. We get negative 2 and 1 third. Is this less than negative 3? No, it's greater than negative 3, so it is not a solution to the inequality. So answer B is our correct answer. 
However, to be certain, we try out answer C in the same manner, and it's negative 3.6, which is less than negative 3, which makes it a solution and therefore not a right answer. And we try answer D as well, and since negative 25.3 is also less than negative 3, it is also a wrong answer, so we cross it off as well. These have been tax objective 4 problems. Thanks for viewing.